Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'd like to do a full test and review on the SB Audience Rosso 65 CDN T. So, this is a medium size format compression driver that uses a 65 millimeter diameter voice coil, neodymia magnet, and a titanium diaphragm. So, SB Audience has introduced a number of new products in the past year or so, and the Rosso series is uh, in the middle of the three tiers of quality and price that they offer and they, they say that it offers excellent sound quality at an affordable price and so you can see that they've gone a little bit above and beyond with the uh, rear cover it's uh, cast aluminum and uses gold plated spring push binding posts so a little bit um, added quality there so I just did a diagram to, to show uh, an example of what you would typically use this with an, a home hi-fi application and so for this test I'm actually using the horn that's pictured in this diagram so this is the ES600 bi-radial horn and it's uh, around 16 and a half inches wide or 42 centimeters wide and below it is a 15 inch woofer so you probably want to use between a 10 inch to uh, 15 inch size woofer this particular compression driver is capable of going down to around 500 hertz and has uh, treble extension up to around 17 kilohertz. So I'm going to get started on looking at the objective test data and then following that I'm going to do my listening impressions. So um, frequency response you can see here so it has great output down to the horns cutoff and in this instance that would be 600 hertz and then there's a broad kind of mid-range uh, hump that's around plus 2 dB. There's a, a small frequency response peak at 8 kilohertz and it's relatively well behaved uh, right up to the mechanical diaphragm breakup at 17 kilohertz. So 17 kilohertz is actually quite high compared, compared to other compression drivers in this size category. Typically the breakup mode is going to be around 10 or 11 kilohertz. So whatever SB audience has done with this driver they've somehow managed to push that breakup mode well uh, beyond the threshold of human hearing so for me personally um, I can hear around here up to around 14 and a half kilohertz so if we look at the published data by SB audience you can see that my results closely parallel what's being shown here their uh, peak at 8 kilohertz looks like maybe they've applied some smoothing there uh, but generally my results are, are very close to theirs. So I've also done on axis 15, 30 and 45 degrees off axis and you can see that the horn itself is, is very well behaved. Uh, step response you can see that it's very well behaved and comes to a rest very quickly with no anomalies or anything that would be of concern. Now with the burst decay, it's very clean through its bandwidth and then we can see that there is a small resonance showing up at the 8 kilohertz and so it would be questionable whether that would actually be audible and you'll note too that I'm using a 35 dB scale. For the impedance curve, you can see that the FS of the driver is just below 500 hertz and then there's a broad kind of hump there through the impedance curve which I compared the two samples that I received from SB Audience and uh, they both are extremely close as far as uh, sample to sample matchup. So there wasn't a concern there and then you can see that the breakup is occurring there. There's a very small blip. So there is something occurring at 8 kilohertz but uh, generally for this type of a driver uh, this is pretty benign and nothing really to be concerned about. So when I did the intermodulation distortion, I started with a test multitone SPL of 90 dB at one meter. And I was seeing the noise floor uh, at minus 60 dB at five kilohertz. And you can see that even in the uh, lower part of the bandwidth, it's even better. So 60 dB, the best that I've uh, seen would be around 65 dB. Um, so one thing that I noticed right away as I increase the SPL from 95 even up to 100 dB the noise floor actually remained low so this is interesting since most drivers that I've tested in the past distortion does rise in a linear fashion but yet we're seeing that um, at 100 dB distortion you can see here it was 57 dB at 90, 95 sorry I'm just so 
from 90 to 95 dB, we only lost 3 dB of noise floor. And so as we increase the SPL, you'll see here that distortion actually remained quite low at 105 and even up to 110 dB distortion was only at 0.5%. So this uh, nonlinear function of this driver appears as though it's able to um, retain extremely low distortion even at high SPL. And so how does that translate into sound quality? Well, um, let me jump right to my subjective listening impressions and tell you right off the bat that this driver definitely sounds excellent, even for hi-fi home applications. So I gave smoothness 9 out of 10. And I was questioning whether I was just, you know, maybe some unconscious bias on this aspect. So I did a direct comparison with the RCF ND650 compression driver. And I did back and forth listening to the same song. And this driver definitely stood out as having a much more refined, uh, smooth, detailed, open uh, sound characteristic. And the and the RCF actually had a bit of a uh, cold clinical sound characteristic, which I al I've always typically associated that with it being a titanium diaphragm. And so I was a little bit apprehensive with this particular driver as well because of this because it uses an, a titanium diaphragm as well but this this driver is devoid of any of that sound characteristic it's it's very um it's just very smooth and uh smooth sounding i guess and uh, so accurate musical instrument timber i gave it nine out of ten and the sense of dynamic range um it being a compression driver it's going to be really hard to beat the dynamic range that's offered with this and this is no exception so 10 out of 10 for that um, so this is an interesting driver because it's able to cover quite a, a wide uh, bandwidth from and you can see here on the published data that the horn that they're using it with it's able to get down to 450 Hertz and so um, and provide clean output all the way up into the upper treble so considering the cost, um, then this, this driver uh, will definitely be something that I'll be using in future projects. Um, definitely has a very uh, audiophile, hi-fi sound characteristic to it. So there you have it. Um, take care and have a great day.